Hey y'all, I'm waiting on some people to come in. Hey Haley, hey Larry, hey Amaya, hey Assyria, hey Simone, hey Marquita, Naya, Unique, Tiana, Stephanie, Jalea, so many of my loves, London, I like how you spelled your name, so I wanted to get on here and share something really special with y'all. I was doing my devotion, and I'm super excited to announce that we'll go live this week for the Sister Mentorship Program. A lot of you have been asking. Hey, Felicia. And I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all so much. So many people, I run into people, and they're always talking about the YouTube channel. So thank you for keeping up with me and just, um, just going through life with me and traveling the journey. I'm excited because... Um, I'm in a good space. I'm, I'm happy. The Lord is talking to me. Um, I have good relationships. I feel secure about them. I feel glad about them. Um, but I'm really excited to share with you some experiences. So I want to, um, I wanted to talk to y'all about what I gained today. So I was listening to my devotional and, um, they were talking about, um, you know, how to maintain purity. And it can obviously be very hard for us to maintain that. And I'm one of those persons where it's been a super challenge. Uh, for the first time in my life, uh, I have experienced such discipline from a man. I've told y'all about that. Um, and I have been convicted because of how undisciplined I've been. So it's kind of shined a light on... Um, on where I can grow and where I can become better. Thank you, Javon. And so I know that we're in a world where we see sex everywhere. Like I was going through my timeline and I'm like, if anybody walked across, you know, the back of me, they probably think I was like this perverted person because anything was popping up in my timeline. I'm like, I didn't even know I was following this kind of person. And I don't say that in a judgmental way, but it's just there's so much that we have access to and there's so much for us to digest all in one moment, right? Um, I mean, it's twerking after twerking. A whole behind is out, okay? And I understand. If if I understand. I understand. Because sometimes I'll be at home and I'll be twerking just to see, looking back at it, just to see if it's moving. So I understand. But we all make our, you know, different choices, right? So, um, and that's, that was a very honest and tra transparent uh, moment. But uh, I just like to make sure I still, you know, can do what I do. Um, I can still dance a little bit, you know. So it was super fun. Anyways, um, but I was inspired and convicted to know that sometimes we have challenges and we have struggles by what we digest, by what we see and by what we hear. And in the devotion, they were talking about, it was Rick Warren, and he was talking about how um, developing this relationship with the Lord or your strength to be pure um, in the mind and in the heart, it's not always by isolation. And a lot of us think that I can't have friends or I got to be completely disconnected. Now, of course, we have to sift through our relationships and reevaluate them and make sure, you know what, is this relationship, like I always say, is it a, is it a benefit for me? Is it, an, is it an asset or is it a, a liability? And I think sometimes we have to ask ourselves those questions. But I don't know if if you if I see, um, you know, a, a guy and a woman and they're hugging on each other. I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna think of Jordan. I'm gonna think of, oh, I wanna go and hug on my significant other. And depending on where we are in life and where we are spiritually, and especially if we tasted some things that may tamper with our purity, if I see one thing that reminds me of another place, then I'm going to be tempted to want to go back there. I'm going to be tempted to want to try it again, especially if it reminds me of how it made me feel in a moment. And some, 
sometimes we're often driven by our feelings when we're not fully developed spiritually. So it can be a challenge and we, we go off of our feelings, which is why I think the, the relationship that we develop and cultivate with the Lord is so special because when we have joy, the seasoned saints used to say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. And I'm gathering from that is that this is a, it's not so much of a feeling, but it is something on the inside of me that is not built or cultivated or strengthened by the world, nor is it predicated upon the things that are outside or around me, but it is simply from heaven. It is simply sent from the Lord. And sometimes when we have things from the Lord, obviously when we're strong enough, it's not moved or shaken by if this is a good day or if this is a bad day, or we, we're more mature in the faith and we're more mature in the spirit to where we have this joy that is unmovable and is not um, easily tampered by five minutes in our day by a five bad minutes you know so I wanted to get on here and I'm not going to stay on here long but I just really wanted to share with you because it felt it kind of lifted a weight for me and um, I do know that sometimes being a believer and being a Christian with uh, goals of righteousness is sometimes unfortunately it's not the most popular thing to do but I still want to see Jesus I almost got emotional I still want to see Jesus and sometimes we go through a journey um, along the path of our um, our Christ following or Christ like walk and we'll start watering some things down and say you know what it doesn't take all of that but sometimes it does take all of that and unfortunately I can be a witness to say you know what I have been in that place before where I was like it don't take all of that and and some things it did not take but some things it did take and because I was so willing to make some adjustments to my faith and my spirituality and my growth in the Lord, um, I began making an other adjustments and I wasn't as sensitive to certain moves or things that needed to take place in my life because I was just kind of moving, you know, and, and just going along with everything. So anyway, but the devotion challenged me and it inspired me. And, and, and he said that it had everything to do with insulation. It wasn't just isolation. It was insulation. And so I I like to look up words. Like when I'm studying and stuff, the way I go deeper is when I understand every word that is in a sentence. So that I can really unlock what the revelation is or what the scripture is. And so I looked up the word and it says insulate. I wrote it down here. I'm going to show you y'all. I just bought some shoes too, by the way. They over there, I tried them on. But I wrote this down and um, insulation means to protect uh, by interposing material. And so I thought about, you know how like, when we go in the basement or something, it looks like cotton, but it's like sometimes either hard, it doesn't look like the texture that we think it is or that it looks like, um, but it's, it's a, it's the, uh oh, I'm stuttering. Protect, insulate means to protect by interposing material. I have here in parentheses the word, the material is the word that presents the loss of heat. And then I have here um, in parentheses the spirit um, of the intrusion of sound. And when I had, when I read the word intrusion, that struck something for me. Um, because intrusion reminds me of invasion. It reminds me of something that that does not necessarily have the authority to come into this space, but because I have not interposed my space with the right material, which is the word, I'm unable to prevent the loss of heat, which is to present the prevent or to prevent the loss of heat. Like I said, the spirit, and then there's an opportunity for the intrusion of sound. And if we think about sound, um, I have in parentheses, um, I have in parentheses the word, the world. Oh, oh, I can't understand my handwriting, but it looks like I'm saying anything, the world or anything, that's what it says, the world or anything that is contrary to what you believe, the intrusion of sound. But another revelation that the Lord gave me while I was reading this definition, the intrusion of sound, uh, if we believe the principles of the word and the scripture, what the scripture tells us, I also should understand that sound is another element of warfare. And sound has to do with the prince of the air. Who is the prince of the air? He is the adversary. He is the um the 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 one we I don't like to say 
fight against. But yeah, we fight against him. So the intrusion of sound. So it sounds like in this battle and in this world war, if I don't interpose myself with the right material, then I won't be able to pre to prevent the loss of heat. And so I just just hope that you're encouraged to know um, that it takes insulation. And sometimes insulation. I think it was David that said, I I meditated on his word day and night. I gave God his time and I didn't push it off. I gave him the time. And so I hope that you're just encouraged to know that it's not always isolation, but there's something too, because Jesus did set himself aside. He went away and he did not always go with his homeboys. Um, and, and, the, and the scripture tells us that. So that is a part of the journey, but insulation, which is uh, man shall not live. Down. Now, this is what the scripture says. And I think Jesus said it, but he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every a word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So if if it's a word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord, when we think and if we're created in the image of him, I would think that the Lord sometimes allows us to see things um, in the physical so that we can connect with what's happening in the spiritual. And once anything is released out of our mouths, there's a form of heat. It's an element of heat. And um in this defi definition again, in insulation it means to protect by interposing the material Material that prevents the loss of heat. The word is the heat. God wants us to have the heat. The words that pro that proceeded out of His mouth. And then here's another scripture: Psalms 119 and 105. And it says, "The lamp. God is the lamp unto my feet. He is also the light." Anytime we think about light or a lamp, that has to do with the heat. So um, I I just this really set me straight and then another scripture second timothy 3 and 16 i just started writing y'all and the lord was just giving me this so i hope that you're encouraged to know that the lord wants us to have answers um but second timothy 3 and 16 it says all scripture is breathed is breathed by god and profitable for teaching i put again the heat and then another one says the lord wanted us to experience the heat so insulation um, if we're trying to maintain purity, I know it can be hard because some of us have tasted some things and it feels good to our flesh, but baby, how does it feel to your soul? How does it feel to your spirit? And so that's it. Just wanted to share that with y'all. It was super random, but it set me free and it gave me something that I needed. And I'm so thankful for, um, what the Lord is doing in my life. Um, oh, here's another thing. When we think about heat, there are living particles in that element um, for us to even feel it, for it to be alive. And then the scripture Hebrews 4 and 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active. This set me free, too, because once I fill myself up with the word, if I'm constantly interposing the right material, I'm able to pre prevent the loss of heat. So I'm getting out of the way. Um, sometimes our conversations have to be more filled or have to be filled more with the word. There it is. So I'm getting off of here. That was 13 minutes. But I wanted to share what you see. I was writing. I just started writing. This is actually my hotel's... Uh, commitment to clean. We take hygiene and cleanliness. Oh, that can't fit. We take hygiene and cleanliness standards very seriously. You'll notice several enhancements to our cleaning practices throughout public spaces and guest rooms. There's a revelation in everything. And then some people may say, hey, you deep. But anyways, it says, um, what is this? John Reed said, Galatians 2, 20, 20, 11, what's your identity? Be blessed. This speaking of from Tony Evans sermons. He's really good. Okay. I love y'all. Thank you for the love tokens. I just wanted to share that with you and encourage you to know that um, the Lord will walk with us. He'll give you answers. And sometimes it'll come in the most inopportune times. So I listened to my devotion early this morning on my way to the airport, but it's like seven o'clock here. And I was just sitting in my room and something just told me something just told me to look up insulation and it was still on my mind so i hope too that you believe and know that the lord speaks to you he he wants you to have an answer and sometimes we think that god is going to come in another way when he comes in a completely different way so i hope that you are encouraged to know that that voice when you like something told me i knew i should have did i i told myself not to 
That is the Holy Spirit. And I hope that we will begin practicing to obey it and listen to him so that we don't become immune to that way of life of saying, I knew it. I should have told my, or I told myself. So I'm sleepy. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Okay. Love y'all. Bye. Oh, but I wanted to get on here too. To let y'all know that registration is going up really soon um, for sister. If you if you want to be a part of sisters, put me, I'm your sister. Me, I'm your sister. Me, I'm your sister. So I can know that you all really want to be a part of it. Um, but I'm really excited. Registration will go up on my website, IamKiraShear.com. And I'm your sister. I see you, Ryan. Yay, Rakesha. Um, Ashley, I see you. Yay, me. I'm your sister. Me, I'm your sister. Yay. So um, it's going up really soon. And um, we've made it different. So we'll do the whole month of October. And the deadline will be October 1st. And we're going to do Saturday mornings because I find that all of the sisters are so up and ready and refreshed um, when it's in the morning. It's better than it was at night because we would do 7 o'clock. So I'm really excited about that. So mark your calendars. Make sure y'all pay attention to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Because I'm going to start um, posting about it, letting you know reg when registration is available, all of that. I love y'all. Be encouraged and know that being pure, it is still possible. It's just all in what we listen to, what we see, and what we hear. And listen, you can start making the change. Um, you can start making the change without having to explain yourself. You know, I'm just doing something different. It can be gradual. And don't think that it has to happen tomorrow. And that's the beautiful thing about the Lord is that he understands. He's He's also interested in our development than he is just, um, you know, how the end goal turns out to be. Because the development has everything to do with the end goal. I can't maintain the end goal if my developmental process was not um, was not good enough or was not good for me. You know, if it wasn't effective, if I don't remember the lessons from the developmental process or if it did not, you know, get some things out of me, then I'm going to return back to some behaviors. It's like an adult. And I'm sure a lot of us know adults that are living out their 20s and like their 40s or 50s. And it's because they didn't get a chance to live those things out, get rid of it and have nothing, you know, just, oh, I, I, I got what it felt like. I got what it was like. You know, it's no big deal. I'm old. It. That's a part of maturity. So I love y'all. I said I was going to get off. Sister, register when it becomes available. Don't miss it. Mwah. Thank you for watching. I love y'all so much. Sleep good. Say your prayers. Don't let the bed bugs bite.